Welcome back everyone, I hope that you are having a lovely day. Today I'm going to teach you how to paint bubbles in watercolour, but we're going to make them galaxy. For today's tutorial you're going to need some paper, I'm using Archer's 300 GSM cold press. You're going to need your brushes, a smaller one and a larger one would be perfect. Your paints of course, a paint well or a ceramic plate that you will mix on, a receptacle for water, a clean paper towel to wipe off your excess water and paint on. You're also going to need something to create your circles, so I have various objects, including a compass, a little disc-shaped ornament, and a mug. Having various sizes is going to be helpful here, but I will teach you a technique using the mug later on. So make sure you have one of those if you want to try it. Then I'm going to be making my circles, make them in various sizes, make as many as you'd like, fill your page, just make sure that some of them are overlapping, it's going to create a really cool effect later. If you're heavy handed like I am, make sure you lighten your lines with a needable eraser so you can barely see them and so they won't show through later. Then mix your colours on your colour palette, I have pink, blue, green and a bit of yellow. First you're going to want to dip your paintbrush into the pink paint, well I'm using pink first but you can use whichever colour you like, pink or blue, and starting to trace around the outline of that little circle that we've made. Actually this is a big circle, I am throwing you in the deep end straight away here. I then dip my brush in the water and I start to blend out that line. Make sure you don't leave your edges to dry, so I'm going to be going back and forth on these two open ends with the blue paint to make sure that there's no weird dry lines in my watercolour later on. This is one of those techniques that's going to be essential to be fast and precise, so try and keep that same circular shape as evenly as possible. I know it can be pretty hard to also be working really fast for this tutorial, but it's going to create the best effect. I'm also leaving a little white shine line, I suppose you could call it, in the middle here. It does kind of get a little bit muddied up later on, so make sure that you have some paper towel to mop it up with in case you get extra water in that little shine line that you've left. Just keep going back and forth with your various colours. At the start I'm only using the two, so I'm using the pink and the blue and alternating between them, and then dipping back into the water and blending them out each time I make a new line. Because I started you out with the biggest bubble, I do switch to a bigger brush so I can start blending a lot easier. So make sure that brush is nice and wet and then go in and start blending all of your extra watercolour lines out. You don't want so many harsh lines but it's okay if you do leave some kind of wibbly wobbly timey wimey lines because it's going to create a really unique effect later on anyway. Also, I'm super sorry about the autofocus readjusting constantly on my camera. I don't know why it's doing that suddenly. It didn't do it in my last tutorial. It doesn't usually do it on my streams. So I'm really sorry if that's annoying. I didn't realize until I was recording my voiceovers. I'm just dropping in some extra blue on the edges there to make sure the edges are the darkest part. And then I'm dropping in the greens and the yellows to create that bubbly effect. I don't know why it does it, but you know how when you blow bubbles it has that colourful sheen like an oil slick? Yeah, that's what we're trying to replicate. So drop in your greens and your yellows and your blues and purples and make a pretty bubble galaxy thing. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I often don't know what I'm doing and I just wing it and somehow it turns out okay and then um, you guys ask for tutorials so here I am making a tutorial not knowing how exactly to describe the things that I'm doing so I hope that the on-screen tutorial part is much more explanatory than my voice over here it's going to be a lot of back and forth darkening up those edges and making sure they are the darkest part of the bubble if you do lose your little shine lines that you created earlier, then you can go in with a little wad of paper towel to just mop up the excess water and pigment, and it will bring back a little bit of that sheen that you wanted to leave earlier. I often do this because I'm kind of heavy handed and chaotic when I paint, so I use this technique quite often. Make sure your first bubble is completely dry, I did use a hairdryer to speed things along, but you can air dry it if you like, it will just take a little bit longer. You can also use a heat gun, which people keep telling me to use, but I've never gotten one in the several years that I've been painting with watercolour. I don't know, I just like using a hairdryer. 
Then use the same technique that we did before except smaller. We are going straight over the top overlapping the first bubble, that's why it's essential for it to be completely dry. It creates that cool see-through effect that bubbles have and it's a really cool way to learn how watercolour overlaps and overlays over each other. I do find these smaller bubbles a lot easier to paint. They are a lot less surface area to cover and make sure that you're keeping the edges wet on. So if you were struggling with that bigger bubble, then try smaller bubbles. I did kind of throw you in to the deep end with that big bubble there, but I was using it for the purposes of teaching you the tutorial and so you could see properly how I was using each technique rather than having a really tiny surface area to show you all of those little tips and tricks with. Next I'm going to show you the technique with the mug, sorry mine's kind of dusty, I usually keep pens and stuff in it. But you're going to start painting the outside rim of the mug, or glass if you have a glass available or anything that has an outer rim like this. You're dipping straight into the watercolour and painting straight onto the outside of the mug. This technique might be a little bit easier for those of you who are struggling to keep that circular shape, but I do find that the circle isn't as crisp, so the lines might be slightly wobbly just because of the nature of watercolor but it is a cool way to speed things up a little bit if you're a little bit I guess short on time or you're struggling to keep those edges wet during the process of the other technique. Once your rim is sufficiently painted you're going to turn it upside down and put it over the same circle that you created using the mug earlier so remember which circle you use the mug for and then kind of push it down you don't have to be heavy-handed with this one and when you lift it up there's going to be a circle again you're going to want to work really quickly here and come in with your watercolor brush filled with water and start blending out those edges again I can't stress how important is to be really quick because otherwise you're just going to have a really harsh line with an edge here whoops i dropped some water quick bring in the paper towel and it's gone okay cool back to the tutorial anyway make sure that you have enough water on your brush and you are working rather quickly because this one i feel like the line ends up more intense even if you don't intend it to be even if you are really really fast it might also depend on which paper you're using so i'm using 300 gsm cold press paper but if you're using hot press paper this technique might be a little different for you this one might work better than the previous technique that i taught you it's just going to depend on who you are as an artist, what you prefer as an artist, and that's why I'm teaching you different techniques, because it's going to be different for everybody. Essentially at this point you're going to be using the same processes that I taught you earlier. You're going to be dipping your paintbrush into the water and then blending out your edges. I just feel that the mug tutorial gives you a little bit more direction if you're struggling to make and keep those circular shapes with the other techniques. I'm going through now and darkening some of the edges of the bubbles. I'm not going around the entire circumference, it's just to kind of make it a little bit more crisp and to darken a few of those edges to make it look more bubbly. I don't know why, I don't know the scientific reasons, but it just looks better, okay? So I'm doing it because it looks better. I also have no self-control when it comes to adding details, so I'm just going to keep adding them. <laughs> So of course my next step is to add more details. I'm going in with Shimmer Drops paint. This is a ghost paint and it has a blue undertone. I will leave a link to the company in the description box below if you wanted to check them out. They're absolutely amazing. So I'm using the blue toned ghost paint uh, on this corner here corner circles don't have corners anyway i'm using it on this edge here and then on the opposite edge i'll be using the pink undertoned paint it just adds a little bit more of that depth and dimension but if you are happy with how your bubbles are looking please don't add this part this is just me adding details because it's me um and it's definitely definitely not necessary to make the bubbles look awesome this part is also optional, but if you'd like to add some stars, I'm going in with some white gouache and putting in some, some little tiny, little tiny stars to make them galaxy bubbles. I think this is a really cute addition. Again, you don't have to do this part, but I really enjoy making things into galaxies. Obviously, my name is Galacticat. And I think it just it just adds a little a little something to the bubbles. 
Anyway, that's pretty much the end of what I have to teach you here, but I hope that you had the most amazing time watching my tutorial and trying it out yourselves. Please show me if you do give it a go, tag me on social media. My name is Galacticat93 on all of them. And as usual, if you do have a suggestion for a future tutorial, then please leave it in the comment section below. I hope that you have a fantastic day and I shall see you hopefully next week. <laughs> I am actually being really good at keeping up to date with my YouTube video uploads so yeah hopefully next week <laughs> until then fare thee well everybody bye